Well, Stuart and I just made up a new word, gazardin. <laughs> I was talking and somehow, basically just different words kind of came together and they made a new word, gazardin. I don't know exactly what the definition is, but there you go. So today I wanna to talk about garden design, but through the lens of your very own personal signature touches. Now, a lot of people ask me why my garden looks the way it does, and I think part of that is because I have some very noticeable and repetitive signature touches. So my question of the day for you is, what are your signature touches? Please list them below and make sure, I haven't asked this for a while, make sure that you put your zone so that if your signature touches as a part of your garden design relates to your garden zone, people know that. So I am doing some work on this whole area right here. And I'll be honest, my garden is just a mess right now. It is untidy, it's overgrown, I am, I've, it's just been an exceptionally busy period right now and my husband just had knee replacement surgery and so that has required a lot of my time. Definitely that's a priority and the garden has kind of taken a backstage to that. So, but in my stolen moments, I'm trying to get out here and work on some things because I have a really, uh, I have a garden tour coming up on September 20th. Definitely Stuart and I will do a garden tour specifically for you guys where I will show you what the garden looks when it actually is garden tour ready and primped and proper. So when I'm overwhelmed like this and I have so many things to do, I and you may be like this as well, it's hard to know what to do first. And sometimes I need to work on an area that I'll get immediate gratification from and I will immediately get my mojo on. And this is an area right now that I am going to tackle and it's basically just the entrance into the potage, which needs a ton of work. So what do I mean by prioritizing my garden tasks by looking through my signature touches garden lens? Well, one of my signature touches is to have things very clipped, not a lot of color, not a lot of perennials, very selective in that, and a very tidy look. And also that that nothing should be noticed. And in this area, too many things are being noticed by me and my garden visitors. One of them is I've got an irrigation line right here that is exposed and I keep trying to plant things to kind of obscure it and to hide it, but that hasn't been working. So finally today, I just need to take the time to go ahead, excavate out some dirt and bury it. I will definitely do that and it may be difficult because this is very rigid. This is a drip line. So it may be difficult to do that, but I, because, because it is so tough and so rigid, but I have some of these irrigation picks that will secure it a little bit lower um, into the trough that I am creating for it. I'll use a couple of those picks and then I'll go back and kind of bury it so that nothing is noticed. And that, by the way, is an expression from the great taste, taste maker, Bunny Mellon, who is Jackie Onassis' best friend and who designed the initial rose garden. Okay, so I'm doing that. Obviously, I need to bury this section and I need to bury that section and I will do it and then I will top dress it with another signature touch, which needs to be replenished in this area, and that is my beloved gravel. So, so many people ask me what I use, and what I use is this Quick Reet Earth Essentials Pea Gravel. It's got the turquoise bar on it. You can see that it's a very natural colored, um, tawny colored pea gravel. I don't necessarily know what size this is, but I do know that it is my gravel of choice. I get it at Lowe's by the bag. When I'm using really large amounts of it, you guys have asked me this before, I will get it in large quantities by the truck full or something from a local, a lo local stone, stone supplier. But when I need just small amounts to remedy different areas or to top dress, 
across different areas, this is what I get. It is under $4 a bag, as is the mulch that I showed you guys yesterday, which is called Happy Grow Soil Conditioner. And so many of you contacted me and said that you, you can't find it or whatever. My recommendation in that regard is to just call that individual Lowe's, ask for the nursery department and ask them if they have it so that you're not driving all over town. Okay, the other thing is, looking at it through my lens, is I like a very tidy garden and this doesn't look very tidy right now. I also don't use a lot of perennials and these perennials right now are also looking very tired. And so because I want my garden to be tidier and because these are pretty much past their high point, then I am going to clip all of these down. Now this will not only create a tidier garden, you guys, but it will give me more kind of negative space or more blank space around these pots and the entrance so it won't be distracting because I think a lot of this profuse bloom and profuse foliage that looks a little bit ragtag right now is detracting from the beauty and the strength of the design of the entrance. So that's another suggestion of what I mean about looking through your Signature Touches garden design lens about why something, and I just realized this yesterday, um, that this is why this area just doesn't look good to me. Now some of these, I should have done this before, but I didn't. Most of this, because it is not buggy and it's still healthy foliage, I will relegate to the compost pile. But some of these things I'm going to bring in a little bit later. I just, I really do like the black seed heads of this Rebecca, And I also am cutting it back because this will self seed very prolifically and I don't want it to do that. So I'm cutting these seed heads back, not only for tidiness, but also so that they don't go to seed and, cre and create another problem for me later. And I'll also selectively take some of these that are still intact and I will use them in some way in a flower arrangement that I've got in mind. So I'll just continue this. Again, this is just so cathartic. And this is something that as busy as I am right now and as busy as you are, um, I can come out and I can do some of this. I can just sometimes capture five or 10 minutes and I can come out and do this. And it makes me feel ever so much better. And then, as I said, it kind of re-energizes me and catalyzes me to go on and work in another part of my garden. So, and I see back here I've got this is one of the stupidest things I've ever done was to plant violets. Now, are they pretty in the spring? Yes, they are, but they're also very invasive and they have created more work than enjoyment. And so this is kind of excavated. In addition, this has excavated some other chores that I need to do. This also relates to something that I talk about in my book quite a bit. And if you haven't pre-ordered it, I hope you guys will. Um, I put a lot of, of time, effort, and love into it. But it's something that I call my theory of garden relativity, which is another uh, garden design construct that I like to think of. And that is every one thing in the garden is related to every other thing. So when you do one thing like this, it tells you what needs to be done next. So by removing this, it tells me then that I need to remove some of these violets and things back here. And you guys don't have to hang in here with me the entire time, but that is something 
that I am going to do. I also, and I can take, I can pour boiling, boiling water on some of these weeds, but some of them right now, I'm just gonna slough off. Make quick work of that. And sometimes, yes, the, some of these might come back, but in the balance, when I, it takes less time for me to slough them off like this than it would be for me to repeatedly put my tea kettle on and come out here and pour water on them. But I also don't want these that are growing up. And this is another garden mistake. In addition to the violets, here's another garden regret I have, and that was planting the ground cover Mazus reptans. It is a sweet little ground cover, and it puts out lavender little blossoms, but my goodness, it goes to seed everywhere, which wouldn't be a problem, problem except this time of year, then it's prone to spider mite, which then spreads to other areas, and I don't like that. Now, in the spring, these things that I'm cutting back, this Veronica and other things, in the spring, I don't mind these being here as kind of a backdrop to these pots. But this time of year, when they don't look its best and they're kind of buggy and scraggly, then I want to remove them. So uh, I will do more tidying up on this. But Stuart, do you think that kind of improves this space? The other thing that it does is it enhances probably one of my most favorite signature touches or my most favorite um, appointments of the garden that very much makes it look like my own, and that is definition. So I like things to really have definition, and I think that's one of the reasons I love spring so much more than this time of year, because this time of year, everything is overgrown. It has lost its form, it's lost its shape, it's kind of turned brownish, and I have lost the beauty of the form and the beauty of the definition. So I'm trying to recapture that. So when I look at this, I can say, why doesn't this look good to me anymore? And it's because it's lost definition. So you might try going out in your garden and seeing if that is an issue. Now, something else that I'm looking at when I look through this, and by the way, so many of you asked, why don't I just always have one of my debris baskets for my QVC line here to put all of my garden debris in? And my answer is sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. But if I don't, I don't care about being inefficient because I call it intentional inefficiency because that's how I get in my, my 10,000 steps a day and a lot of exercise. So by bending down, by going back and putting this stuff in the trash can or whatever, I'm getting in lots of steps if I don't have time to exercise today. I'm still getting a workout. It's all part of what I consider to be garden-inspired living. And if it also keeps me from feeling frustrated when I forget something. So, and trust me, right now in my two-story house, I'm getting lots of steps in with my husband's knee being out. So, I'm clearing this out. Now, another thing that I'm gonna do is basically kind of trial and error. So I'm looking at this and I don't know, something, something doesn't look right. So I do lots of trial and error, and just like people move furniture from here to there, I move my pots around, I move all sorts of different things around, and I'm going to do that. One thing I'm going to do is start decluttering everything, because not only is it overgrown, it has lost its definition because there are too many pots, it's just too cluttered. So some of the pots that are at this entrance I am going to move out of the way. I'm just going to set them over here till I tackle this area. This also exposes another section here that I need to bury, or I could just dump a bag of gravel on top of it if I don't want to do any digging. And then here's what I'm doing. I, I think I want something taller here. Now I'm going to, you guys are going to do this along with me. I may like it and I may not, and I'm going to ask you which you like better. So look at it now. 
These are two sweet olives right here. They are framing the entrance. I've got them on pot stands, plant stands, and I really like olive trees. And by the way, you guys, I aged. Stuart, if you could kind of do a close-up. These are plastic pots, and I did age both of those. So, Stuart, let's put above... Um, let's put a link to the one where I aged pots. There's actually been a couple of them, but I aged this. Some of you asked if it would come off in the rain. No, it doesn't come off in the rain. And if it does, it comes off naturally so that it really makes it look like a, a very new pot. Okay, so this is a faux terracotta fiberglass or whatever, and it is not too heavy. So I'm going to take this opportunity. Another thing, by the way, that is going, that is blooming right now, and I'm going to cut all of it in a mass uh, flower arrangement to bring it inside, or all of these chives, all of these garlic chives, because I certainly don't want them to go to seed. So I will probably dig this out, but these are very pretty and the pollinators love them. So I leave some of them, but I definitely don't want them to dry. So I will cut those back and I'll be happy with that effect, I think. So here is what I'm thinking about putting here. And again, this is, this is an experiment. I don't know if I'll like it or not. So we'll just see. So I'm gonna move this plant stand. And I'm gonna come over here. And because this is also a fiberglass pot, and because I'm extremely impatient, I don't ever want to wait for somebody to move something for me, I typically will go ahead and do this myself. Now the challenge here is always to get it straight. So I'm wondering if I'm gonna like this or not. I'll need to put a shim or something underneath it for it to be straight. These, as you recall, are the Silverado Sage that I tended a while back and I cut them back hard. I've got some Verbena bonariensis that's coming up in here. I'm going to remove that. And you may recall, if not, we'll put the card to the video up above, that these had mealybugs. And so I was, I cut them back hard to start promoting growth on the inside. Stuart, if you can show the woody growth that's in here, or the new growth that's on the woody growth. And that was all encouraged by my cutting it back hard and giving it a good feed. And I believe I used an Espoma liquid feed on this. So I'm gonna do a couple of things here. I'm going to shape this up just a little bit. I also think these put out fuchsia blooms. Let me see if I can show you. These will put out fuchsia blooms. Now, for whatever reason, maybe because I pruned it back hard or, or that they were originally kind of buggy, they have not bloomed very well. So I want them to bloom. I'm thinking about fall. And these will continue to bloom, really, for as long as the growing season continues, but they're definitely handsome whether or not they have those fuchsia flowers on them. So this is informed by another signature touch. Why am I making this chain change? Because I love topiary. And there wasn't, I, I thought this strong form of the clipped topiary might give me more definition I might like it better. I kind of want to change things up a little bit. Oops. Again, I'll be more exacting with this with my scissors or hand pruners later, but I want you guys to see what the tight form can look like. I love this gray-green foliage. 
And this is a plant that definitely, if I lived in a zone where this was reliably hardy, oh my gosh, I would grow so much of this and it would make an excellent boxwood alternative. So if you live in Texas or an area where this is hardy, oh my goodness, I, I envy you and I would definitely, I would definitely encourage you to plant more of this. I really love it. Now, when I did this pruning, this hard prune on it earlier, I noticed that it started putting out lots of new growth at the base. So I can leave it as a single ball standard or I can start clipping this and turn it into a two ball. And I think I'm gonna do that. And you guys will probably wanna know about how old these are. And I'm gonna say these are maybe eight to 10 years old. They go into my friend's greenhouse. Um, and then this also gives me an opportunity, a seasonal opportunity, another signature touch later on. And that will be to really make these a seasonal focal point as the ent entrance to this. And by that, I mean all of this barberry is gonna start turning colors. It's gonna be beautiful in oranges and deep reds and magentas. And then I'm going to probably, I think, mulch this mulch the base of these with small pumpkins, small gourds, berries, maybe some bittersweet and things because I real I think I'm going to do if I can, I'm going to do some entertaining in this area this fall and I think this would just really be brilliant. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to finish cleaning up this space, giving it more definition. So this is an unfinished job, but let me know which you like better. Do you like the tall topiary there or do you like the shorter sweet olive there? Let me know your thoughts on that. I might pull these out a little bit further. I've got some zhuzhing to do, but it's starting to get a little steamy. You guys may not want to be out here with me to do this much longer. Um, but when I have it all finished, and if you like, you can maybe reserve judgment until you see how I've got this area styled. Um, but tell me what you think. And if you are a YouTube member, not just a subscriber, but a, but a member of my channel, I think it's $2.99 a month or something like that, then in the community tab, I'm, I'm going to start putting lots of after pictures. So you guys saw a little, you saw it the before, you saw a little bit of it in process, and then in the community tab, when I get it all styled, all pretty and everything, I will show you an image of what it looks like when it is absolutely complete. So there are uh, some ways of looking at your garden task through your very own garden signature garden design lens. For you, it may be more or less color. For you, it might be um, adding more or less pots. It might be really decluttering. Who knows? It might be painting something a signature color. So look at your tasks uh, and to-do list through the eyes of a garden designer. Well, in case you've held on this long, this is your fashion epilogue from this segment. Starting from head to toe, this is a safari hat, and I get it off of Amazon. I've actually had one for many, many years that I wore when we went on our honeymoon to Africa. It finally bit the dust, but you can get this off of Amazon, and I'll put a link below. It's especially great, you guys, for, for men. I find that they like it because it really allows kind of some air circulation. It doesn't get too hot because there is a certain kind of gap between the top of your head and the top of this hat. So that's why it's so good and I use it uh, periodically. It's also kind of stylish to leave hanging out, I think. And so it's one of those kinds of things that unlike 
a regular straw hat, which can look a little too sweet, this has kind of a masculine vibe to it that I like. Um, my sunglasses are just classic Ray-Ban Wayfarers. You can get these just about anywhere. My t-shirt is made well that I got from Nordstrom Rack. I've worn it before. My shorts are J. Crew. I've had them for a million years. My belt, I'm really starting to get into belts because I think they're a wonderful accessory to zhuzh up your outfit. I believe I got this one at Target. I don't know how long ago. Uh, my shoes are Tom's and I'm not going to be doing any digging in the garden today so this should be just fine. If I'm going to be doing digging I practically always have on garden boots. My earrings came from an art festival in Chicago many many years ago and two other additional items that I think are really important. Number one, I think probably the best accessory that you can have when you're outside is sunscreen. So I keep some spray sunscreen uh, by the doors both in front and back. So so that way if I forget to slather it on when I'm upstairs getting myself ready in the morning, I've got some right there by the door that I can spray on and I really like the spray sunscreen because it applies, uh, its application is just so easy and effortless. And then of course, let me show you this, excuse me Stuart. This is kind of a tail of two hedge shears. You guys know that my very favorite are the Barnell head shears. They can be kind of hard to find, and I'm sorry to say, I don't know whether or not to take responsibility for this or not, but I think I have driven up the price of these because over the years I've recommended them so much that now they can be a little bit hard to find and the price has gone up. Now that may be grandiosity on my part, but I've definitely noticed that the price has increased as I have started to uh, sing their praises. You can still find them. If they're too expensive on Amazon, sometimes just look at other sources. Okay, but here's another tip. So this is what I mean by a tail of two head shears. I save these for my boxwood and my really priced topiaries and things. I save the Barnell shears for that. When I'm doing junipers or just cutting things back, uh, cutting back my perennials, cutting back my barberry or things like that, then I use a different type. These are Corona. There's a lot of different varieties that you can get. These are not as lightweight. They don't have the pointy tip that I like, but I don't necessarily care if these get a little bit gummed up in the process of trimming my junipers and some of my conifers which is often the case so that's why as part of my ensemble I will have two pair of head shears instead of just one 